awesome things I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go, but I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel in me within. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Some folks may die, some folk may scorn, some can desert and leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part, for God is real, for I can feel Him in my heart. Yeah. sisters and brothers of new creation. I, good morning. I greet you this morning on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Veronica Livingston, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Um, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and this is Jazz Appreciation Month, and to celebrate that, next Sunday evening, from 3 to 4.30, we will have a jazz appreciation uh, jam here at New Creation. So if you're able to attend, it is free, and we would love to have you here. Um, our strategic planning priorities, more people committed to evangelism, deeper, le deeper level of personal and spiritual development, and all people serving in the area of their God-given gifts and calling in Christ. 
uh, Vacation Bible School. Helpers, help is needed. So anyone who is willing to help out and we need plenty of help like last year, please uh, let us know. Oh, contact Melissa for that, correct? Melissa Raspberry. Uh, further announcements, uh, the United Women of Faith will meet this afternoon, right after worship today. Um, Adult Sunday School meets via Zoom today at 2 p.m. Administrative Council meets tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. On Tuesday of this week, we will have the Vacation Bible School Planning Team at 7 p.m. PM via Zoom. And there will be no noonday Bible study this Wednesday, but there will be a healing and anointing service here at New Creation at 6 p.m. All are invited. And there will be a safe sanctuary meeting at 6.30 on Thursday, April 25th. Uh, continue to lift up those on our prayer request and anyone else who you may have that we are praying for. And we have no birthdays this week, surprisingly, and no anniversaries this week, surprisingly. Um, at this time, I'll come around with the microphone and you can let the church congregation know any joys or concerns that you may have. Good morning. Um, I would like to ask for prayer. I take my final exam for my first year of pharmacy school tomorrow. So prayers for that and for everything that comes after that. I get a nice long break, but there's some things that need to be, um, you know, wrapped up and taken care of. So prayers for that. I would also like to thank you all for all of your prayers and your concerns for my father. Um, please continue to keep him in your prayers. He has good days, he has bad days, and he's still on the road to recovery. Please continue to keep my mom in prayer as she cares for my dad and make sure that he's getting the best care that he can. So thank you. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I just want to tell every, each and every one of you all in here, y'all are the bomb.com. Um, I just thank God for y'all being my family and whatnot, and I just thank you for all of your prayers. Um, as you all know, um, from the 4th through the 10th, I was in the hospital at UNC, um, pneumonia, and my blood sugar shot up to 436. And um, it was a bad situation, but I tell you, um, God has my undivided attention now. Um, I, I walk. I eat healthy, I check my blood sugar on a regular basis, and this is versus what I was not doing before. Um, I was causing myself to be a ticking time bomb, but like I say again, God has my undivided attention. And again, thank you all, all of you, for your prayers. Um, it was a bad situation, and like the movie said, Wakanda forever. <laughs> Good morning, church. Like Alvin, God is good. I thank you for your prayers. Um, if you'll remember last week, I raised a health issue. Uh, when my pulmonary doctor got in touch with me, he disagreed with the radiologist. And um, uh, told me that he did not think I needed to be concerned at this point. Um, I do have, uh, I have nodules on my lungs. That's, that's part of the issue. And they have been growing, but growing very, very, very slowly. And it alarmed the radiologist. Uh, but my pulmonary doctor has been watching this for years, right? So I go back to him in six months, but he, he calmed me down and, and said, be still. So my, my soul is joyful. My soul is joyful regardless, but I do thank you for your prayers. God is good. I have a joy. First of all, I'm so tickled to be back in church with everybody and able to hug. 
two, my sister will be coming on Wednesday of this week. So we will be here for the healing and anointing service because on Friday we get on a plane and we head to Greece. And I will be missing you all, but not a whole lot, sorry. <laughs> I have a joy. Um, Friday, I officially completed all of my classes for my first year of law school. So, yay. <laughs> Thank y'all for being on this journey with me, but uh, please keep me lifted in prayer as I start finals this week uh, so that I can officially be done. So, thank you. Give an honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to express sincere thanks and appreciation first and foremost to Pastor Livingston and to my brothers and sisters here at New Creation for the prayers that you have sent up for me and my prayers that you'll continue to send up prayers for me while I'm on this particular medical uh, journey of mine. I am thankful for the treatment option that is available to me that was not offered by my primary care provider here in Durham. I'll be journeying to New York uh, on a continuing basis for my medical treatment. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning uh, for about in New York City. So please continue to pray for me. I express sincere thanks and appreciation to you, but above all, to God for what it is that he's doing and shall do. Believe in it, we receive in it. Praise be to God. Amen. I also like to lift up a prayer request. Uh, Dr. Ruth had asked that the church pray for his brother, Pat Martin. Um, he had surgery on yesterday and is doing well from the surgery, but does have some other issues. So. We ask that the church would be in prayer for that family and for um, he and his sister and their traveling mercy as they, he's already there and his sister I think was supposed to leave yesterday from Texas. So we want to lift him up and his family with all of our other concerns, amen. To God be the glory for the things that he is doing among us for healing and all the joys and celebrations as well. Let us stand for our call to worship. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we come today to celebrate God's love for us. Let us worship the Lord today with grateful praise as we sing our opening selection, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, God, we just thank you for bringing us to this time of worship. Even though it's raining and cloudy on the outside, Lord, we rejoice in our spirit. So, Lord, we ask that you would refresh us today and revive us. Remind us of the many ways in which you have blessed our lives with your abundant love and the way you care for us. Lord, we ask that you would touch our hearts and our minds so that we may live a life of service to you and abide in your grace. And the church said, Amen. Amen. illumination. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened us the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the scriptures through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I will now begin our reading of scriptures with Acts 4, 5 through 12. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers, their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had said, and this is thinking of the apostles, the they is. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved to be further interpreted with more scripture. By this we know love, because he 
our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has, he has given us. The word of God, will the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, children may be excused for children's church.
that day. Lord, since then I, my God's been real, for I can feel His holy power. Yes, God is real. He's so real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for He has washed and made. This morning, real in our souls, and we do give God praise for that, for um, touching our hearts and minds and enlivening our spirits to know that he is the Lord. Come on and let's put those blessed hands together and give the Lord a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Let us stand for the reading of the word. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture, beginning at chapter, verse 11. I am, this is God speaking, Jesus speaking, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, we are the sheep. And the hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the word of God for the people of God, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> and from that text this morning, um, for a thought, it's just the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Let us pray. Come now, incarnate word. Gird on thy mighty sword, thy prayer attend. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness, descend on us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord for you are our strength and our redeemer. Let the church say amen. 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 amen, the good shepherd. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is celebrated each year as Good Shepherd Sunday. In today's lectionary readings, particularly the psalm and the gospel writings, they present a powerful metaphor for Jesus as the good shepherd. 
Jesus' self-revelation, as you heard read in John's gospel, as the good shepherd gives us comfort and security, and it illustrates God's unwavering care. Understanding the historical context of shepherding in the Bible is crucial for us to fully grasp the metaphor of Jesus as the good shepherd. In ancient um, Near Eastern cultures, shepherds and sheep held a significant place to the extent that their kings were often referred to as shepherds of the people. Now, this was not just a political or religious title, but a reflection of the shepherd's role in providing care and protection. For instance, Moses, Aaron, and King David were all described as shepherds of God's people, emphasizing the shepherd's role as a leader and a protector. In Psalm 23, penned by David, it is the, one of the most well-loved psalms in the Bible, and one that I'm sure that we all can quote by memory. In this psalm, David parallels the intimacy, love, and protection between God and his people and that of a shepherd who provides for his sheep. In Jesus' time, shepherding was still a, a vital occupation, but yet it was challenging work, and it was also dangerous work. But Jesus portrayed as the good shepherd gives us a deeper understanding of his love for his people. This, this discourse of the good shepherd in um, the 10th chapter of John comes after Jesus heals a man who was blind at birth, which seems to be tragic and heartbreaking, but God can turn our greatest tragedy in our greatest blessing. Amen. God gives a testimony of his goodness, and we have a testimony of God's goodness. And so out of compassion for this blind man, Jesus healed him from physical and spiritual blindness on the Sabbath, which was forbidden. And so in this good shepherd um, discourse, Jesus contrasts himself with the thieves and the bandits and the, the hired hand who is more concerned about his welfare. And so this stark contrast emphasizes Jesus's unique qualities as the good shepherd. For example, in this text, we see that the Pharisees, who were supposed to be spiritual leaders, revealed their uncaring nature when they showed more concern about Jesus breaking the Sabbath law than the blind man's welfare, than him receiving his sight, because they were oblivious to the truth about who Jesus was. And so we live in a world today that is filled with chaos and, and uncertainty, and people are looking for a savior to guide them in navigating life's challenges. People are looking for belonging, for a connection and community as they search for spiritual fulfillment and particularly authenticity. And if they cannot find it in the church, within the faith community, they become disillusioned and turn to something else. I believe that that's one of the reasons that our church pews are half full this morning, because when people come to the church, they don't always see authenticity. They don't always feel welcomed. But as sheep, we are responsible for letting the world know that Jesus is the good shepherd and that he meets our universal needs and offers comfort and assurance and hope to all who would follow him. And so the descriptors used in this parable, thieves and bandits and hired hands, play a pivotal role in our understanding of who Jesus is. He is our salvation, the one who provides and protects and loves and instills in us a deep sense of trust. 
I, I think that David expressed it, the, the, expressed the trust and provision that we find in God so eloquently in the 23rd Psalm when he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me. He restores me. He is with me in the valley. He comforts me. He anoints me. His goodness and mercy will follow me as long as I live. Now we should be shouting right now that we have that kind of confidence in our shepherd. If we know that, if we live that, and if we believe that. Shepherds and, and sheep pens were common in Palestine. So Jesus used this analogy because the people would be familiar with that. A sheep's pen, as you can see on the screen, was a rock enclosure. And it protected the sheep from thieves and wolves. As you notice here, it does not have a, a covering, but only a door for the sheep to go in and out, a door for the shepherd to keep watch, to take care of the sheep. And at night, that's what the shepherd would do. They would guard, they would keep watch and, and keep guard. And each morning, the gatekeeper would open the door for the shepherd. And so Jesus reveals himself as the gate or the door for his followers. And there is no other legitimate access available for the sheep except through Jesus, who is the gateway to our salvation. Are you with me this morning, church? And so when the shepherd would lead the sheep out of the sheepfold, out of the sheep pen, he would go before the sheep to guide them down the right path. And because the Lord is our shepherd, he leads us down the right path. And so when the storms of life begin to overtake us, when we get a bad report from the doctor, when we are walking through the darkest valley, we can cry out with blessed assurance, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so understand that a sheep's pen provide shelter for many flock, not just one, and they belong to different shepherds. And yet the sheep knew the voice of their shepherd and they followed only their shepherd. They would not follow a stranger because there was an intimate relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. There is an intimate relationship between Jesus and those who believe in him. Because see, Jesus knows each of us, every believer by name, and they recognize his voice. Jesus knows every detail about those that he care for, cares for. You remember on the first Easter Sunday when Mary was at the tomb talking to a man that she presumed of the gardener, but when Jesus called her name, Mary, she recognized his voice. And so we need to learn to recognize the voice of God, our shepherd. We live in a culture today where many voices speak to us, and seemingly those voices seem to be authoritative. Social media, television programs, politicians, and even well-meaning friends. But we must come to know and recognize the voice of Jesus or other voices can lure us away. How many of you enjoy fishing here? Anybody fish? Only a few people. Okay. See, I read that fishing is a, a stress reducer and that it builds new uh, friendships and might occasionally bring dinner home. Occasionally. Isn't that right, Mr. Livingston? Occasionally. And that's good. But personally, I don't know about those who didn't raise their hands, but I'm content catching fish at Capital Seafood. But when people fish, 
Fishers often use lures. And just as the name implies, the purpose of the lure is to entice the fish to grab hold of the hook. And a lure can use movement, a vibration, a flash, or color to attract and bait the fish. And the world that we need to recognize is filled with lures. And we know that sheep are known to stray. And so we want to recognize what is real. We want to figure out, we want to know the real deal from what is not. Because that is the only way that we can stay connected to the Good Shepherd. Otherwise, we are easily lured away from the fold. Everything that looks right and feels right and sounds right is not right. And the, the world uses different methods and, and lures and false teachers to lure us away from Christ. And so in this text, Jesus implies that the Pharisees and the religious leaders are thieves and bandits, lures, trying to lead God's people astray. But we are reminded that Jesus came to protect and provide for his sheep. And as the good shepherd, Jesus will risk his life and even temporarily abandon the flock if that's what it takes to save one lost sheep. And as important as the entire flock is, one single sheep, just one, has as much worth to Jesus as the entire flock. You have that much worth to Jesus. And so Jesus was willing to die, and he did die, to redeem us from sin and its consequences by the grace of God. Several times in this recourse, uh, this discourse, Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. He is the God of our salvation, a shepherd and the guardian of our souls. And so when salvation takes shape in our lives, we experience wholeness and, and, and health and safety and the joy of being in God's presence on this side and not just on the, top, the side what is to come. We can enjoy that on this side because of the confidence that we have in Christ as our good shepherd. In verse 16, Jesus said, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, but I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now see, that was problematic for the Jewish people because they were more than content being God's chosen people. But God shows no partiality and through Christ the Gentiles were accepted into the fold and united with the Jews under one shepherd. So let me say that again, God shows no partiality. But sometimes we do as sheep through our many biases, but God does not. God sent his only son to redeem the world. Not a specific group of people, but the world. God's love is inclusive for all humankind, and he extends an invitation to all people, regardless of background and identity. His love and grace is available to everyone, and the invitation to follow him is open to all who seek after him. Jesus is the door to our salvation, a door open to all who would hear the gospel of his saving grace and believe. Only Jesus can reconcile us to God. And so deciding who is in and who is out is not sheep business. Instead, we should be thankful that Christ had mercy on us and welcomed us into the fold. We should be grateful that we made it over. 
See, the responsibility of we sheep folk is to testify to the boundless love and grace of Christ and that alone. Jesus is the good shepherd through whom we have access to God. Now, many people would tell you there are other ways. Be careful of the Lord. But Jesus is clear that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. And whoever comes through Jesus will find green pastures, abundant life, eternal life, and any other path leads to destruction. So Jesus is the one that we should follow. He is the good shepherd who will search for us, look after us, rescue us in times of trouble, guide us and lead us to grazing land. He will tend to the sick and the injured. He knows our strengths, our weaknesses, and our fears, and Jesus will never ghost us. He is the God who knitted us together in our mother's womb. And even now, he sustains our very existence and continues to give life to his sheep. And he did that by laying down his life. In this text, Jesus emphasizes that he was not coerced into dying for us by anyone. He did it willingly because he loves us. And that is what we must grasp as individuals. And we need to remind ourselves, Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. Jesus was all in for me. And we, we don't understand that. And we don't need to understand that. We just need to understand that Christ is our Savior and the Savior of the world. Listen again to verse 17. Jesus said, For this reason the Heavenly Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. You see, Jesus not only lays down his life for his sheep, but he takes it up again. What does that mean? It means that Jesus' role as a good shepherd not only includes the, res the, the, the crucifixion, but it also includes the resurrection. Because Jesus' resurrection is just as much for our good as his death. Because we are resurrected because of Jesus. And the resurrection proves that Jesus has power over life and death, even his own, and we have the victory because of Christ. So I have good news this morning on this Good Shepherd Sunday. The Lord is your shepherd still, and there is nothing else that we need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the church said, Amen. 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 We are so grateful this morning for all that we have in Christ as our good shepherd. And as you heard in the message, he invites those who do not know him to come to know him as Lord and Savior. And if there is one this morning that cannot say with confidence that the Lord is my shepherd, we invite you to give your life to Christ this morning so that you can come to know this, this great Savior, the one who provides all that we need. Amen. And we know that as the shepherd that we can come to God in prayer with all of our concerns because when the door was open, we can come boldly before Christ, come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us go to the Lord.
God of grace and mercy and love. We praise you on this day. It is in you that we have our being. And so right now, Lord, we come to you naked, wounded, weary. But God, we know that we have confidence in you. And so God, we ask that you would just look upon us right now. You heard the concerns. And God, you know even deeper the things that trouble us. And so, God, we come and we stand in the need of prayer. And so, God, we ask that you would just search us right now, our hearts, our minds, our thoughts. And if there's anything that's not like you, Lord, that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. And, God, we, we lay our burdens down before you. We thank you, God, for being a burden barrier. We thank you, God, that we can cast our burdens on you because your yoke is easy. And so God, we ask that you would continue to move in our congregation, move in this world that you created among your people. And let us, Lord, be the light. Let us be sheep that would carry your word. And so Lord, as we come, we also speak healing in every area of our lives, spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing. And so God, we cast it all before you because God, we know that you can do everything but fail. And so now, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And we thank you for the opportunity to pray to you. We thank you for being the good shepherd. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We have so much to be grateful for that the Lord is our shepherd. And he loved us so much that through this table, he prepared for us to come and celebrate what he has done for us through the life of his son, Jesus Christ. And he invites us all to this table. Those who earnestly love him and repent of their sins. So now let us confess our sins before one another. Let us pray. Lord, you are our good shepherd. We ask that you would open our hearts so that we are able to admit to you the fullness of our lives. That which is beautiful and good, and that which is sometimes ugly. We confess that we do not always follow Jesus in all that we do. We lie down when we could act, and often we follow tempting paths, paths of unrighteousness, instead of following you. Sometimes our love is conditional, we judge and we condemn. We look for courage and comfort in earthly treasures rather than in you. We see sanctity when you offer us abundant life. We see scarcity. So Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and strengthen us that we might imitate Christ in his sacrificial love and in his service. And now, Lord, we pause to lift out individual petitions to you. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Amen. And let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. To God be the glory. Let us prepare to lift our offering as forgiven and reconciled people. We give ourselves and our gifts to God. So if you have an offering this morning, if you would just lift it, the ushers will receive it.
Let us pray. Lord, we offer these gifts to you. As the good shepherd lay down his life for his sheep, may we too strive to serve our neighbors with our prayers, with our gifts, and our ministries. Lord, we give you thanks for giving us the privilege to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pause for a moment in humble submission as we prepare for the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending praise to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit, by your great mercy. We have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds of Christ who brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it his, to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and, and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ returns in final victory and we all feast together at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory and power is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray together as our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and deliver us from evil. the bread of life, and the cup of salvation God has given for us. We who are many, but we're all one body in Christ, and we share in this holy meal together. table is set. We ask you to follow the instruction of the ushers as we share in this holy meal. Right here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us stand for our closing selection. To God be the glory. We worship his majesty in this place. And as you leave, remember this week, feed on the fact that we have a good shepherd who cares about us, who rescues us, who guides us on the right paths. In the name of Jesus. And now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. And the church said, <laughs>